So the first time I was on a stage like this was over 30 years ago. And I remember that day vividly. I was sitting in the audience, much like you, thinking, thank goodness I don't have to go up on that stage. I was in high school, and I was so self-conscious and shy that the idea of getting up in front of my entire class was terrifying. So I was so grateful to be sitting there until I heard my name echo across the auditorium. Apparently, I was winning an award. <laughs> so quickly, the blood drained from my face. I felt weak and nauseous. My heart was pumping so hard, I could hear it in my ears. And I quickly thought about pretending that I didn't hear my name. I thought about fabricating some sort of an emergency that I needed to slip out the back door. But I quickly realized that neither of those options were going to work. So I got up the strength to get up and make my way towards the front of the auditorium. And when I got about a third of the way back from the stage, I walked by a group of football players who proceeded to shout out, 31, 42, hut, hut, hike. As you can imagine, I was mortified. I could only hope that the rest of the auditorium and the faculty on stage couldn't hear them. So I quickly grabbed my award and I hightailed it back to my seat. You see, in high school, I was about 100 pounds overweight. And the comment that they, they referenced was the fact that I'm five foot nine and also had and still do have rather broad shoulders. So the 31, 42, hut, hut, hike comment was a reference to my build, which was similar to a linebacker. So that day was a, a low point for me, but I knew that I had a lot of adversity to overcome in my life. But I was determined to not let the view that those boys and others had of me define me. I didn't want to be that poor, overweight, lonely, bullied girl. I wanted greatness. I wanted to prove them all wrong. But more importantly, I wanted to prove myself right. I wanted to show myself that I had the greatness within me. And it just needed to come out. So from that point forward, I looked at every challenge or type of adversity as an opportunity, or what I like to call an advertunity. I told myself that I can do anything and be anyone I wanted to be. As long as I persevered and had confidence in myself, I could achieve greatness. So when I think about rising above adversity, I think about a souffle. Similar to life, souffles can be challenging, but with the right approach, you can create something incredible. So I think about the egg whites. They start off as loose and liquid and, and weak, but you continue to beat them and you transform them into something that can stand firm and endure, essentially becoming the backbone or the foundation of the souffle. And that reminds me a lot of perseverance. So I'd like to share a great quote by Newt Gingrich. Perseverance is the hard work you do after you get tired of doing the hard work you already did. And that is so true. So for me, I had tried dieting before, but honestly, I didn't have the willpower and I gave up quickly. I didn't have the perseverance. But this time, I knew it was going to be different. This time, I knew that I needed to persevere like never before. I needed to be determined and I looked at my weight loss goals as an opportunity to do something huge for myself, something that could change my life. So when my sister came to me with an idea for a low-fat diet and an offer to do it with me, I jumped at the chance. I'll admit, it wasn't easy at first, but I stuck with it, I persevered, and to my surprise, I lost about 100 pounds over the course of the year. The thing about perseverance is that you have to believe in yourself. You have to have confidence that you can achieve greatness. With perseverance, think about the people in this world that, that persevere. Think about Thomas Edison. Do you think Thomas Edison invented the electric light bulb overnight? No, absolutely not. He, he failed hundreds, if not thousands of times before succeeding. So what, what was different this time? I focused on at my perseverance. I had the willpower. The I also uh, stayed optimistic and positive. And speaking of positivity, that's my next ingredient in my recipe for rising above adversity. 
So when I think about going back to my souffle analogy, how many times have you looked at a recipe and thought to yourself, nope, no way, it's more than five ingredients, or it calls for some sort of technique that you're unfamiliar with? Immediately we go there, right? We all have these self-limiting beliefs, and we all think that things are impossible, that we can't possibly you know, make that recipe come out right. And I get it. Right? There's absolutely a, a need for us to be mindful of the negative concerns that are all around us. But what if we dialed it back a bit? What if we only focused on the negative when it was truly necessary? What if we started to replace our negative self-talk with you know, comments like, I'm not smart enough, or I'll never lose weight, or I'll never get out of poverty, or I'll never get to go to college? We can replace each and every one of those thoughts with a positive one. I am so proud of myself. I'm the first person in my, my family to get a college education. I'm so proud of myself, I met my ideal weight. So the, the idea there is that advertunities are all around us, and they could be big or they can be small. But I believe if you focus on the positivity and optimism, that can have an impact. So my biggest opportunity, or advertunity, I should say, to rise above adversity and overcome my challenges was in about 2018. It came about five years ago. I went in for what I thought was going to be a routine surgery, but turned out that I had a tumor growing in my abdomen, and unfortunately, it was malignant. So I once again turned my thoughts to positivity. I told my oncologist that unless you legally have to tell me, I don't want to know the stage or the life expectancy. I told them I'm going to live in Kimmy land, and I'm just going to focus on getting better and beating cancer. And that's exactly what I did. I turned my focus to positivity. I looked at my cancer journey as an opportunity to learn more about myself, uh, a, a testament to my strong faith, and the reminder to make life matter. So as I was going through my cancer treatments, I reflected on the fact that this life-changing experience was an opportunity, an opportunity and a wake-up call to the fact that we never know when today might be our last day on earth. So I promised myself when I was healthy again that I was going to make the most of every day. And that's exactly what I did. I found purpose in my struggles. So going back to my souffle analogy, you know, it's not always easy to, to stay positive, and, and I recognize that certainly there's, you know, challenges that we come across on a daily basis. But if we just dial it back a little bit, you know, try reframing our situations. If we get frustrated sitting in traffic, you know, try to think about the fact that we're grateful to have a nice, safe, comfortable vehicle to be sitting in. So as I reflected on all of my years of staying positive, I realized that I wanted to share my message with a bigger audience. I wanted to help anyone I could to try to stay positive and focus on, on optimism. But as you know, that takes courage, which is the next, the next ingredient in my recipe for rising above adversity. So um, one day, I was Googling how to raise awareness about a message or something along those lines. And pageantry came up. So at the time, I said, I have no idea what pageantry has to do with raising um, a message or sharing a message. And I quickly realized that it was just an opportunity for a bunch of like-minded women to come together for the greater good, right? We just want to make the world a better place. So as much as I wanted to make the world a better place, I, I was terrified with fear, terrified of walking across that stage again, terrified of being judged terrified of, of not being young enough or pretty enough or interesting enough. So my inner critic was back, and I needed to make a conscious effort to focus my thoughts on staying positive. So how did I do it? How did I get the courage to walk across that stage? I replaced my negative thoughts. What if I could help just one person? What if I can make a difference in just one person's life? What if I can walk across that stage again. And that's exactly what I did. I competed in the Mrs. Connecticut pageant, and I won the opportunity to represent our great state in the Mrs. America pageant in Las Vegas. I glided 
across the same stage that Elvis performed on day in and day out for 636 sold out shows. So to rise above my, my courage, or to rise above my fear, I should say, took a whole lot of courage along with some perfectly peaked egg whites. So with rising above your fears, you want to not let them stop you. That's the thing with courage. It's not just a feeling. It's not just the feeling, oh, I, I feel courageous, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. No, it's, you actually have to act on those feelings. So you, you don't let fear stop you. And I love this great quote by Matthew Kelly. This is so powerful. So much can be accomplished in one moment of courage, and so much could be lost to one moment of fear. And that is so true, right? So much can be accomplished in just one moment of courage. So when I think about rising above adversity and I think about our recipe, I think I, if you were to look at life with just a little bit of perseverance, a little bit of positivity, a bit of courage, that can help you along with maybe a dash of motivation and a sprinkle of humor to, to get you to focus on that from that perspective and just rise above your adversity, overcome your challenges. Now, the thing is, your recipe may be different from mine, right? You might need a little bit of extra motivation and a little less perseverance. Or maybe you need to add a stabilizer, like cream of tartar. The idea here is that you have confidence in yourself, in your abilities to overcome your challenges. That's essentially the, the, the message here, is just recognizing that you have that power within. Each and every one of us has that power within, and you just need to, to find the recipe that works for you, and whether that's a little extra humor or a little extra motivation. Because the reality is, adversity is all around us. We all ha will have or will experience some sort of adversity in our life. But practicing perseverance, positivity, courage, and some of these additional ingredients, and you can overcome those challenges. And just remember that adversity doesn't have to last forever. So focus on the good and the positive, and remember, as my dad always says, this too shall pass. So I've had an opportunity to share roughly 2,000 of my heartfelt words with you today, and I want to call attention to the one word I want you to think about the next time you're faced with a challenging situation or some type of adversity. Advertunity. Think about how you can find the opportunity in adversity. Thank you.